Hello, this is exercise 15a. Um, we're looking now at uh, a numerical attempt to find the area um, of a of a of a definite integral. So um, we we can effectively use areas of um, uh, rectangles to approximate uh, 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 what the area under the curve would be. Remember the area under a curve and integration, they're linked, and that's what we're going to look at here. So if we um, just have a look at this and uh, see what we can come up with. So in our first example, let, this will show us really what's going on. The diagram shows part of the graph of y equals cos of x squared. Now it's not a graph that you, you know, tend to look at. Cos of x, yes. Cos of x squared, no. Oh, by the way, obviously this has got to be in radians. If it's not in radians, it won't work. So... You'll need to set your calculator to radians. And it says use six rectangles. I'm just looking at this and the obvious thing here. Um, all right, it says between 0 and 1.2 as well. So six rectangles, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see each rectangle will have a width of 0 0.2. And that's because I've got 1.2 width here. And I'm going to divide by the six rectangles and they give me 0 0.2. So what I mean by that is I'm going to look over here and I'm going to draw a rectangle of the curve. And it says to find a lower bound. So I'm going to treat that to be one. I'm going to treat this to be another rectangle. And you'll notice on each occasion I'm seeing where it hits and then I'm going to go across. at that point and down at that point to make a rectangle the next rectangle will look like this so one two three four i need two more um it's there so there's one rectangle and we're only going up to 1.2 now you can see if i was to add up all these different rectangles it's definitely smaller than the actual area under the curve so that's why we're describing this as a lower bound the, the the smallest this integration that i've got to find is going to be we want the integration of cos of x squared dx between 0 and 1.2 and we're saying well find the area of those six rectangles so the thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my table function which is on um, this um casio calculator menu and i'm trying to remember which one the table is it's a nine you could do it on the uh, other calculator as well if you've got it but um f of x equals i'm just going to type in um, it, i'm in radians so it's a good job i checked so it's cos of x squared close bracket and it says um g of x so i've only got one graph so i don't i just press the equals and it's gone the start value is naught end value is 1.2 and the step is 0.2 and it basically tells me the value of all these things and um, what that then tells me. So I'm going to draw my table x and y. So for x equals 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And I could have got this, of course, 1 and 1 1.2. I could have got this off the graph, but I'm going to do it as accurately as I can. That says 1. Oh, I don't want it at 0, though, do I? Um, so I don't want that one. I want it at 0 0.2. That's where my first rectangle was. So 0 0.9992. I've got 0 0.9872. But 0.9358. And all these numbers, I'm just going to go next to 0 0.802. At 1, it is 0 0.5403. 0 0.5403. And hopefully you can see this on your calculator as well. 1.2 much smaller 1.0.1304 and so um what i therefore do of course the area of a rectangle is length times width um so the length of it i could think of as 0 0.2 each time and i then times by the, well, the width is the height so if i times all these numbers by 0 0.2 it will give me the areas of each of those rectangles and they're all the same um, so if you then work those out, it's just, I have to go menu 1.9992 times 0.2, and it's a very small 0.19984, and I have to do this for all of them, 
which is a bit of a bind, 9872 times 0 0.2. And this time I've got 0 0.1974. 744. 0.9358 times 0.2. 0.18716. 716, that's right. 0.802 times 0 0.2. 0 0.1604. And these are all areas of the individual rectangles. And so what I have to do at the end is um, add them all together. That's simply all I'm going to do. So you can see it's, the math isn't hard here. The, the trick is just getting the right values. 0 0.1304 times 0 0.2. This is the last one. And I get 0 0.02608. And if I quickly add all those together, I want to say it's, it's quick. I don't think it is quick. 0.10806 plus 0.1604 plus 0.18716 plus 0.19744 plus 0.19984. Got that one wrong. Well, I get 0 0.87898. Let's see what the answer says. Yes, so to three decimal places. It doesn't tell me how to round it, but you can see. That is a lower bound. Notice the way this then works. My actual answer must be more than it. So 0 0.879 rounded to three decimal places. So that's one example done. Here I've got, oh luckily it's only four rectangles this time. Um, now it wants me to find the area between 2 and 6. So I want to find the integral between 2 and 6 of log of x squared plus 1. So there's 2. There's 6. You can see there's a difference of 4 between them. So when I chuck this into my calculator now, I'm going to start with x equals... Now it wants, does it, it wants, a, ah, it wants an upper bound this time. Be careful. Now if I want an upper bound, and I do what I would just did, can you see that that first rectangle is lower? So my first rectangle this time is actually going to be that. And I take this value here. That so you've just got to look at your picture. So I need the value. My first value is going to be at three, and at four, I will do a similar thing. I'll do there, then at five, and then at six. So just get your head around that. Uh, three, four, five, six. I'll go to table function table mode nine again. Mode nine, and my function is the log of x squared plus 1 close bracket equals and I'm starting at 2 going up to 6 and my step is 1 step is 1 just bear with me I've just typed it in wrong there so my values this time I've got for 3 I've got 2 point so bear in mind I typed in Two, but at three, two point three zero two five, I've got two point eight three three two. I've got three point two five eight. And my last one is three point six one zero nine. Of course, it's an upper bound. This is going to give me because my all my rectangles are higher than the graph. Now, um, again, oh, actually, this this one's easier because the length times the width calculation this time the width of these is one so that makes it a lot easier i'm timing all these by one effectively i can just add those numbers together so one less job to do here go back into menu one and i'm going to on my calculator add these together and with any luck i'm going to type it in correctly which is not guaranteed so i get 12 and a bit and uh, good yeah so i got when i added these together all, well, technically all times by one but obviously as i said i am i get 12.046 um and now this is an upper bound so really we're saying it won't be any bigger than that in fact it will be lower than that and that's why you can see i've said here the uh, area is less than 12.0 um four rectangles 
to find up and like that's right. So this time I want both. And I've drawn the graph for you. This is obviously the graph of y equals 2 to the minus x, or the layout here I've written f of x equals 2 to the minus x. And if I want the integral between 0 and 2, um, you can see 0 and 2, that goes up in 0.5s. Now, to get the upper bound, 0.5 isn't the one I use. Actually, I want to use the 0 one for this, because, because it's a going down function decreasing function to get the upper bound height it will be at naught so i just need to bear that in mind i'm going to write x and y i'm going to say naught it's going to go up in 0.5 so in both cases will be the same and i think it's just a case of which ones are used for the upper bound which ones are used for the lower bound so um menu nine again f of x a equals 2 to the power negative x. And the start value is 0. The end value is 2. And it's going up in 0.5s. So I'm going to write this now. I've got 1 for that one. 0. 0.7071. 0. 0.5. Ooh, 0.5. 0.3535. And the last one, which is a bit of a nicer answer, 0.25. Now, I'm doing for each rectangle the length times width. I think I'm, for the, for the first example, to get the upper bound, I'm going to use the 0 value, the 0 0.5 value, the 1 value, and the 1.5 value. So I'm going to use these four to get the upper. And for each one, I'm going to times by 0 0.5, I'm going to add them together and get an answer. Now the lower one, the lower one will be these four, because you'll notice to get the lower one I do 0 0.5 value, the 1 value, the 1.5 value, and this one, the last rectangle, is that we use the 2 value. So again, for all of those ones, I'm going to times them all by 0 0.5 to do the length times width trick, and... I'll get an answer. Now, I want you to type that in your calculator to see if you can get the answer. When I did it, I got the um, the lower number. Um, I got 0 0.905. And the upper number, I got 1.28. Both of them rounded to three six figs. So notice how I've written it. I've written it as an inequality. Um, so this area, this integral, is between this number and this number. And is that what you have to do? Now, this actually came up on a further maths exam in past years. Um, and so this is just a question for us to look at whether or not we'll finish it in time. I don't know. Um, the diagram shows the curve with equation y equals e to the x squared. So not an obvious equation. The area of the region under the curve between 0 and 1 is a. So they want us to find the area under the curve. And they're saying it's a. And they know that show that it says the upper bound for the area is 1.71 so all right then to get the upper bound all right now this is not what the picture do to get the upper bound no this it is to get the upper bound i would use that one now, that would be the rectangle yes so i would do x um for and i'm just going to write 0, 0 0.25 0 0.5 0 0.75 and 1 and then y, let's get this quickly, I haven't got long, I want you to ultimately do this. So um, menu 9 again, f of x is e to the x squared. And I'll just type these in, and then, um, so I've got these values of my calculator, and I've quickly written them down. Um, just be aware then, to get the upper bound, um, I need to use... 0.25 so for this time for the upper bound it will be these ones this is the upper whereas to get the lower bound i'll use those four get your head around that for me um, my answers on this for 1.71 for the upper it says that in the question for the for the lower bound does it say what that is um, no, it doesn't. I'll leave you to find that. Oh, no, it does say it. it says 1.28. See if you can find those two numbers. Your job is to have a look at exercise 15a 
don't do question two. I don't know what's wrong with it, but don't do it.